Right, so this is just a fun little project I thought I'd have a go at while I work on my spoken ancient Greek. Anyone who's seen my video on casual ancient Athenian phrases knows I've got a fair way to go, but honestly, it's never going to be perfect. Recently, however, I have started to try using the Lucian pronunciation, which is a bit more reflective of spoken ancient Greek. That said, I do stand by the vast majority of my pronunciation in that aforementioned video. It was not meant to be Greek by modern standards, and it was not meant to be Erasmian Greek either. And despite the grammatical slip-ups in my translations from the English to Ancient Greek, and my British inability to grasp any language beyond English, I am pretty sure that the 5th century BCE effort was there. But anyway, I've decided to use that classical or Attic pronunciation for the sources I use from that period, like Plato or Aristotle. But now when the Greek is from a source from the Hellenistic period or later, I'm going with the so-called Lucian pronunciation, which I admit does sound a bit nicer, especially with my hopeless accent. And that segues quite nicely into this video, which contains some passages from my absolute favourite Greek writer, Lucian of Samosata. He was a phenomenal satirist from the second sophistic period in the second century CE, and some of his best works contain first-person dialogues between the gods. So in this video I'll be taking the Lucian pronunciation and my editing software to showcase three divinely inspired passages. One from Zeus, the big man himself, another from Deathly Hades, and a third from the sea deity Doris, daughter of Oceanus. Setting the scene for the first speech, we fly to the peaks of the Caucasus Mountains, where the titan Prometheus is chained to a rock. He begs Zeus to free him from his torment, in which a vulture pecks out his liver each day after it grows back each night. A terrible, terrible way to live. But Zeus is apathetic and responds brutally. In Lucian's story, Prometheus goes on to offer up a prophecy for his freedom, and so he tells Zeus that if he has a child with Thetis the sea nymph, that child will dethrone him. This would then lead to the birth of Achilles to Peleas instead, and for that Zeus lets him go. The more conventional tale would have Zeus ignore him regardless, however, and leave him for many more years until Heracles came along to free him. For our next speech, we dive deep into the bowels of the earth and beyond, into the underworld, where we come upon Hades, the lord himself, in conversation with Hermes, who often escorts the dead to him. Hades is angry at the money-hungry hangers-on of an old 90-year-old millionaire called Eucrates. So he says to Hermes, So let that be a little warning to anyone looking for shortcuts on their way up the greasy pole. For our third and final godly passage, I'm going to utterly embarrass myself. This comes from Lucian's Dialogues of the Sea Gods, the Dialogi Marini, where we take a plunge into a conversation between Doris, one of the Oceanids, and her daughter, the Nereid Galatea. 
Galatea has attracted the attention of none other than Polyphemus, the Cyclops Odysseus would famously come to blind. But before that happens, he's currently trying to woo Galatea with music and gifts, and Doris is really taking the piss out of her daughter for just how terrible the Cyclops courting is. Oh, poor Polyphemus. He never had much luck in these myths, did he? Galatea was already in love with a mortal man, Achis, who eventually became an immortal river spirit, while Polyphemus ended up blinded and humiliated. And how lucky are we that Brad Pitt's hair can almost pass as a scene in fear? So there you go, three far from perfect passages in Lucian Greek spoken by the gods themselves. And although this video unfortunately didn't pass the Bechdel test, I do hope you still enjoyed. Thanks for watching.